The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself upward unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. One more day being renewed to the praise of the glory of our Lord, so that under the divine energy which our Lord gives for us, when we are thoroughly under the power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we, the believers, ought to give only one thing to our Lord in the purity of our soul, in the purity of our spirit, in the purity of our body, nothing but great glory and praise to his name. Lord God, the Father has a purpose with us so that to the praise of the glory of Lord God Almighty, we need to work we need to really manifest. We need to really tell the angelic conflict and the men along with us that it is the power of Lord God Almighty that reigns in us to do his work valiantly. That he has chosen us and he has chosen us and is not wrong in that. But rather we being called as sons of God, as our Lord writes to the church or to the angel or to the servant who was there in the Laodiceans, our Lord tells to them very clearly, the one who can overcome, the one who can understand, either if it has to be, it has to be hot with the fellowship of God. In the privacy of our priesthood using rebound 1 John 1 9, getting back to learn to know the truth and to stay in the truth and apply the truth, our Lord constantly affirms to us, that in the prospect which our Lord has given us, the only bona fide spiritual gift, if they are pastor teachers only of male believers, and the prospect of each and every believer that they are now being called as ambassadors for our Lord. It is the great duty of each and every believer to make sure that in that prospect, not by accident, not by this, not by that, in that prospect of great reality, we need to serve this great Lord. And this great Lord demands nothing but true integrity, uprightness, as we walk in the fellowship of Lord. In this great prospect of our life, every believer being given each and every minimum at least one spiritual gift, have to show forth to become like the ten minus one, not even the five minus, or in fact even the wretched bad condition is one minor. The man who went and digged. The five minus made five minus, but the scripture in the Greek is very clear to, say, to tell you are becoming, that meant to say he has to still become, to rule like likewise as the 10 minus 1. But whereas it comes to the scripture of 10 minus 1, it stands written very clearly, you became and you have the authority. The airest middle and the middle passive. Really, dear brethren, there is much we need to learn. There is much we need to learn as we give and come in the grace of our Lord, under the divine energy of our Lord, to be faithful enough, never to worry about X, Y, Z trends, never to worry about the problems of this earth, because our Lord said, as he was telling in the Laodicean churches, either you ought to be hot or cold, lukewarm people, I will spew them out. What we spew them out, even if your own spit, if you spit out, you are not going to take it in again. But here it is not about the salvation. But here it is the deeds that today if it has been gone, it has been gone. If today we are not able to purchase the time unto Jehovah and if you are spending this time into which which is not at all worthy, then take it granted you have lost it. So Lord is going to spit it out. Spit it out. And this time has been gone. You will never record it back again to your life. You may be thinking you have been surviving so many years on this earth. No. Every breath, every second is accountable to my Lord. That's what we have been told. Redeem the time. Purchase the time. How can anyone purchase the time? As a believer, you alone can have the divine capital to purchase that time. The divine capital is nothing but the indwelling trinity. Lord God, the Holy Spirit who indwells in you. 
when you have been rebound and getting back into the fellowship, getting back into the bottom circle, that is the time when are you purchasing the time to God. Without that, you cannot purchase. Without that, you cannot think. Unbelievers cannot have the time to be purchased. And furthermore, as we the believers walk in the negative fellowship, that is what grieving and squelching and lying and tempting to the ministry of light get the Holy Spirit, as our Lord told to the Laodicean churches, He tells even to us as a great recommendation for us, because in today's Christendom, many are lukewarm. They are neither hot nor cold. They are not repenting to be jealously boiling for God. At the condition of those people, Bible very clearly explains, they are wretched, they are miserable, they are poor, they are blind, they are naked. The five categories which is happening today in each and every believer. But God is faithful to write certain faithful pastor teachers who really work out for the word of the Lord. It has been written and kept in the word of the Lord and it has to be made manifested through the pastor teacher who has to speak out when he has been faithfully prepared. But we need to be thankful to our Lord because in every generation he has at least some faithful pastor teachers. As we can read in Revelation as we have read in the past of Samuel time. I have 7,000 knees which have not bent down to bow. What a great lesson we can learn. Even the remnant which our Lord chooses and keeps, He has faithful men. That's what the point I want to tell. Even the pastor teachers in this apostasy period of the church age, rising cults, where we can find today poor Bible teaching, not pure, but poor. Men emphasizing miracles, healings, or tongues. Men emphasizing about oil businesses, kerchiefs. Rather than emphasizing upon this mystery doctrine of the church age, through the power of light, God, the Holy Spirit, making Apostle Paul to be a Paul of a Gentile, or an Apostle of Gentile, and, and writing us to know that this great Lord demands morning ones, evening ones, sacrifice. That's what Second Corinthians 4.16 tells to us, in comparison with Romans 12.1 and 2. In comparison with Leviticus 6.13, the fire shall be ever burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. The same principle of the Old Testament time. Now we are giving a living sacrifice to God, which is a divine sacrifice to my Lord. And every day is very much accountable. And in fact, even indeed, if you can ask me, every second is very much, in fact, even indeed available because we need to purchase the time to the praise of the glory of Jehovah. We cannot say XYZ methods. We cannot say XYZ excuses. Telling that Lord couldn't do this. Lord, I was such. I was this. All those excuses you tell to your wives at homes or to your mothers and fathers at homes or to your brothers and sisters. But not with God. He knows even each and every intent of your thought. The motivation behind that intention. The intention wherewith you want to put into action everything Lord knows. Don't think that God doesn't know. God doesn't think. Or God doesn't look. He knew every word, even that is which is upon our tongue, before it could speak out. Far less you can think your deeds and your actions are not being known to God. With what heart you are coming to Lord? To gain momentary satisfaction of this earth? A temporary elevation of the suffering of this earth? Anyone who has been walking according to the manner of godliness, they have to undergo suffering, persecution. Persecution in the sense, not with unbelievers. Persecution in the sense when Lord tests you in the three momentum periods of this great unique spiritual life. The first test, providential preventive suffering of spiritual self-esteem. The first stage. Second step, it goes on for momentum testing under four categories of spiritual autonomy of the second stage. And furthermore, the final testing of our Lord, evidence testing under two categories, whichever will come only one category, either life or towards the plan of God. And that will be the final stage of spiritual maturity. And in all of these three stages, doctrine, 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 number one, cognitive self-confidence, cognitive independence, the second stage, and the third stage, cognitive invincibility. There is nothing you know about, there is nothing you can know in this world except doctrine. That is what cognitive invincibility is. What does the word say? What is our thinking now? What is the mind of Christ that is ruling in us now? That is what you and I have to learn, dear brethren. And as we fail to buy time, 
as we fail to get back into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as we spend our time in useless and worthless things, take it granted. It is not a joke with my Lord. That's why he calls you. You are neither hot nor cold. I will spew you out. But I offer you one offer for you. You are not able to understand that you are miserable, wretched, poor, blind, and naked. And you have not been known why these things have been told for us with a great reprimandation, with great exhortation by Lord God Almighty. Because we need to buy gold. Buy gold in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit with God. We need to purchase white raiment of clothes. Rather than purchasing, you need to be in a, in a realm of manifesting the righteousness of God as we walk. As Job had the testimony, Daniel had the testimony, Noah, the preacher of righteousness, had the testimony. That's why these three names have been recorded in Ezekiel chapter 14. Because of their righteousness, they, they themselves shall be saved, but not their wives or children. It's of a very great lesson, dear brethren, that you and I should learn. And furthermore, he tells, you need to buy something that would be called as I salve. Your eyes could be opened up. Today, the problem is, people are not interested to look upon that I salve. People are never known what is that I salve. People are only interested that which can lead them. But they are neither interested that which could be for truth. And that is what it is happening today in our churches. This I salve, which can really give you the enlightenment already being prayed on behalf of this by Apostle Paul, when he forewarns us very clearly to tell, enlighten the eyes of these people, O Lord, so that they could know the truth. And we are not. Because you don't take doctrine. Above all, you don't want to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is so much essential for us to know. And after this, we have a great lesson to be learned, which talks to us. Anyone who overcomes, I will give him the throne. At the same time, there was a woman who came with her two sons while our Lord was on this earth, asking that, make one to sit on the right, one to sit on the left. But here, Lord gives us an open challenge, open invitation, telling to the point, anyone who overcomes, anyone who is in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and moves on to become a winner believer, getting maximum glorification for Christ, taking into account every second, every day, every breath, to the praise of the glory of Jehovah, holiness unto the Lord. Anyone who overcomes, Anyone who fears that the Lord God of hosts' name alone we need to sanctify, for he alone is our fear, for he alone is our dread. Anyone who overcomes, who lays it upon to his heart, and Lord shows himself on, on the side of him or behalf of him, whose hearts are loyal to him to strengthen him, easily they can overcome these things. But they are not, because they don't love the light. Because they don't really fear and love my Lord. If they would have really feared and loved my Lord, they would have really loved to be in light rather than darkness. As these people are perishing in darkness, they don't want to be in light. It is of a very great pain that we are, made, that we are telling you again and again the same things. Men are loving darkness because they don't expose their deeds in, in the light, what they are doing in the darkness. And they love darkness more than the light. Though we have been told to overcome, that is the light, to walk in the light, to form highways for Christ. But they are not interested. The only problem is the minister who is standing there has not known the importance of the word. The believers who are coming to the church have not known the importance of doctrine, and that's why. The woman claimed either of the two sons should be ruling on the right hand, the left hand of my God. But our Lord gives a great invitation of challenge and tells to us, anyone who overcomes the throne of us, they will rule with me. Anyone who overcomes, how can you overcome? By ignoring doctrine, by rejecting that is true in the word of the Lord, and concentrating that which is lies in this world, 
the span for only that you live 30, 40 years or 20 years after salvation. Or in fact, even indeed, we do not know when is the rapture of the church. We do not know when it happens. In the meantime, Lord wants you to be pure. Lord wants you to serve him with great honesty and integrity of truth. Lord wants you to walk in the light. In the meantime, when you walk, and if you overcome these things, overcome your miserableness, wretchedness, poorness, nakedness, blindness, and see upon integrity of the truth, look upon the light and understand the word of the Lord and cover your shame with doctrine. Buying gold to my Lord, walking in the integrity of, right, uh, of, of brightness with white right raiment to our Lord, and enlightening our eyes in a day by day process, the three things which our Lord demands to be done. By gold, not silver nor precious stones. For the purely mentioned for us, gold represents the word of the Lord, gold represents the ministry of light, God, the Holy Spirit in our lives. And that is for all days you are going to do this. It is a very short span, dear brother, and you believe it or not, very much short span of time. 30 years, 40 years after salvation is nothing. Every day, if you can count, it could really result in 15,000 days, more or less, for 40 years that are going to survive after salvation. You get this knowledge. As earlier, it would be better for you. And above all on this earth, you know what is God's purpose. If you are going negative towards doctrine, Lord knows how to spank you, how to chasten you, in warring discipline, intensified discipline. And if you do not obey for both, then it's going to give you unto sin unto death. You are kaput, you are gone. Then too, men are not able to move up. But rather they are hard-hearted and stiff-necked to come back and give number one priority for Bible doctrine. Though this short span of time that we are surviving on this earth, a very short span of time, when our Lord counts, one day of our Lord is thousand years, then how much great and true it could be for us. It is not even one day, it could be just counted in the hours for the 30, 40, 70, or in fact even indeed 80 years that we survive on this earth, which our Lord graciously grants if it is His will. In this short span, you can count 10 years of your life as one hour in the Lord. Not even one day it could calculate because it will be only for one hour. If you can calculate into one day 24 by 1000, you will be getting approximately four point change into one days. If you could divide 1000 by 25 years or 24 hours, it could mean, really, for the span that we are spending over here, approximately 400 or something change like that. It would be somewhere around 41.67 or 66 six or 67 to the close for one hour if it has been 1,000 years in Christ. Because one day is equal to 24 hours, and with our Lord, one day, if it is equal to 1,000 years, and if you calculate that one day into 24 hours and divide it by 1,000, you'll get 41.66 approximately. One hour will be equivalent to 41 years of this life on this earth. And at the most believer living on this earth in comparison to the 1,000 years if our Lord could count one day, it will be one and a half an hour of time on this earth for 60 years. Or if he is living more healthy, for two years or two hours of this time. At least in these two hours of the time that we need to be faithful to our Lord on this earth. And in the two hours I'm calculating for 80 years to get salvation, to know about this knowledge of God, to get into God accountability. It will take minimum 10 to 15 years to be just wasted out. And once you come back to learn the word of the Lord, it will go another 10 or 20 years to learn very dogmatically the word of the Lord in sincereness and faithfulness of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And you start really your missionary by the age of 30 or by your journey in the age of 30. And from the age of 30 till to the point of 50, that is what, another 50 years, 80 years, you are surviving and you are giving Lord only 1.1 hour. That is approximately 50 to 60 years. And for this one hour, in the, count, in, the, in the count of Lord, if our Lord could count, one day is equal to 1,000 years. 
What is the life that we are paying to God? And for this life, Lord is giving us a throne to rule when we are faithful. This temporary privilege pilgrimage trip that we are going through and given for us in this church is allocating cases with polytum of privileges so that we could be constantly in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit there is nothing in this world that you can stick the only thing that you can stick and you have to be alive over here is for the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit that's it greater the time that you invest in the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit greater will be the privilege for you to know the truth and we are not able to stay faithful to the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and we are not able to understand the simple truth. Dear brethren, this one hour or one and a half an hour of life in comparison to the thousand years of one day, how much faithful are we to God? How much faithful will be for us at the account when we appear at the judgment seat of Christ so that we could overcome and rule with Christ? Therefore, dear brethren, our Lord says, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. If you are really ready to open, then I will come into unto thee, and you can have fellowship with me, so that we can both have dinner together, or food together, sup together. And if you say, no, I don't want, then perish in your own things. Look out and calculate for your time, as we shall come back and continue in the next tape. Father, grateful for the privilege of us going to fellowship through the word. We pray that Lord God, the whole spirit, land on the things, and make us a blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.